another zero to 60 opportunity. I'm not one to look a gift horse in the mouth. Ready? <laughs> so what I've gotten here is the Dodge Challenger RT shaker package. And there could not be a better place to test it than here in Phoenix, Arizona, where this car is in its element in long, open roads. It's at home here. It can get up to speed really fast and then it'll just sit at 65, 75, 80, if that's allowed, and it'll just go all day long. See, in 2008, when Dodge announced that they were gonna revive the Challenger, they promised that they were gonna try and copy the muscle car spirit as well as they could while making sure the car fit in a modern era. In my opinion, Dodge hit the nail on the head. I mean, the first thing that strikes me about the Challenger is the looks. It is an aggressive, mean looking car. It does not mince words about what it is from the outside. Starting from the front, you've got this angry eyebrow look above these LED halo, which I think is one of the best implementation of running lights in any modern car. And in this, with the shaker package, which is an optional extra for challengers, you've got the one single shaker hood up front with a real mean look. I love the shaker hood. I think it looks way better than the uh, normal two snouts that sit low on the hood. With this one, you've got the black wheels on the black body with the black racing stripes. It couldn't look meaner. And those good looks aren't just for show. This car has the punch to back them up. This one is the RT Plus Shaker trim level, which is exactly in the middle of the multitude of trim levels that Dodge offers for the Challenger. That means this one comes with a 5.7 liter V8, which makes 375 horsepower and 410 foot-pounds of torque. Driving this car is easy. There's no way around it. The steering is very assisted. Driving at low speeds is not intimidating. It's a big car and it feels a big car, especially for a two-door, insert Challenger heavy joke here. It's not until you get somewhere out here, like, I don't know, a highway in the middle of a desert and you drop it down a few gears in the seven-speed transmission and put your foot down that, without even trying too hard, you're doing speeds that officers might disagree with. Let's talk a second about the current trio of modern muscle cars. You've got the Challenger, you've got the Mustang, and you've got the Camaro. It seems like the Camaro and the Mustang have both gone off to compete in the sports car world. Yes, they're putting out big horsepower, but they're also focusing a lot of their attention on the suspension and the handling of the car. I mean, these cars were developed at the Nürburgring, and as we all know, that's an indication of paying attention to cornering speeds. During all of that, Dodger's busy creating a 707 horsepower supercharged V8. They don't give a flying fuck about their suspension. These cars know who they are and they are about one thing and that is about going fast in a straight line. It does reflect its heritage so well. The company's dedication to match their original muscle car as closely as possible does not go unnoticed. Let me just pull up a picture of the original Challenger and compare it to the new one and then do the same for either the Mustang or the Camaro and you'll see that it's the only one that even comes close to matching the original styling. Back when Dodge announced the first Challengers and they were running through their first years of production, a point that they wanted to hit was having many tiers of drivetrains and a lot of options for customers to choose from. You had everything from the uh, original inline six engines all the way up to the gigantic displacement V8 Hemis. And the same is true today. You can get anywhere from the V6 Challenger all the way up to not only the 700 horsepower Hellcat, but the new Demon. You can find a Challenger for any sort of budget. The steering feels, it feels very assisted. It feels a little bit numb. Like I said, not a race car, not meant for a track. It is 
go fast in a straight line all day. It's a nice place to be here in the cockpit if you keep your attention right here in front of the road. As soon as you start to look over, you can see this sort of, I don't know, flat looking dash. The more you travel towards the passenger side of the car, the more boring and utilitarian it gets. But if you keep your attention right here, you've got some okay feeling paddle shifters if you shift the uh, auto transmission into manual mode. Right up front, you've got how fast you're going, which if you own this car, I'm sure you're gonna ignore. Visibility is not very good. You've got thick A pillars, huge C pillars. This car has a reverse cam, probably less as a fun feature and more of a necessity. I couldn't imagine trying to back this thing into any sort of tight quarters without having a backup camera. So the Challenger is not without its flaws, but that doesn't mean it's not a fun car. Dodge focused on creating a singular experience, the muscle car experience. From the outside, you've got a cool, intimidating presence, and on the inside, you have the only thing that matters, a gas pedal directly correlated to the smile on your face. So the question becomes, of the Camaro, the Mustang, and the Challenger, which would I rather have? And I have to admit, the sports car elements of the Mustang and the Camaro are very tempting. But when I'm out here driving on desert highways, the natural habitat of the muscle car, in what is, in my opinion, the last muscle car being made in America today, I gotta admit, it's a lot of fun. Hey everyone, thank you for watching the video. If you are new here, be sure to hit the subscribe button. I've got more cool stuff coming your way. Hit the like button if you enjoy what I'm doing. If you want to be a part of the show, there's an email below to submit your car. If you want to see a behind the scenes video, I put one together in the link in the description below. It's a lot of fun. We uh, take you along with us while we make the episode and we rescue a few dogs. No big deal. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you on the next one.